Chad talked to uh, Len and uh, said, you know, we got this new thing that's on the market. You know, we're willing to maybe put one in your station and you guys can deploy it whenever you guys see fit. We received it on a Thursday afternoon and uh, the following Tuesday, we had a call to a structure fire where we were able to really see how it worked in an actual structure fire. Call came in and it was a training night, uh, but most everybody had gone home already, but we still had a very good response. Um, I think uh, Len and Rod were the first ones here. They uh, donned their gear. The, the structure inside was fully involved. We could see through the windows there was a lot of flame. We had a lot of smoke uh, coming out through the vents and, and the, the window areas around doors. So we knew we had a pretty good hot fire cooking at that point in time. City grabbed the damn thing, ran up to the front door, which was already open because the RCMP had opened it. Looked in, bent down, looked inside, saw the flames, uh, pulled the string and threw it to where he thought was close enough and then closed the door. So we let it do its job and we're quite surprised as the smoke started to change color from a real black smoke to a whitish color. Let it do its thing and by the time the pump got there, the fire was out, um, basically just some smoldering embers. So when the guys arrived on scene, got their hoses ready and with the thermal imaging, they gained access into the front door as well. And they could see the room temperatures at that time were in the neighborhood of three to 400 degrees. Um, total maybe a five gallons of water used on the whole fire, which probably would have taken, you know, two, three, four, five hundred 500 gallons of water. As I crested the hill on 8th and started to drop down into the, into the neighborhood, you could see this haze in the air. And it, it, it wasn't a typical smoke type haze. You could tell there was something different about it. Once I finally did get a chance to go inside, very little water. Uh, I, I noticed even as we were doing the investigation, kneeling on the, the carpet on the floor, the knees of my gear weren't even really getting wet, soaking up water. So obviously uh, the, the device laying within, you know, two feet, I would guess, of the seat of the fire quenched everything. You know, really as, as far as attacking the fire, not much to do, more or less just uh, some salvage and overhaul at that point. My guys are, were a little disappointed because they like to put the, the, the wet on the red and, and uh, they didn't have to do that as much. As I mentioned before, firemen are famous for putting the wet stuff on the red stuff and it makes your job, your job as an investigator a lot more difficult because a lot of what you need to piece together gets washed away by the pressure of the water or the, the water itself dilutes it down. You know, if you've got a flammable substance that dilutes, it makes it a little more difficult. Everything was still intact, you know. Uh, what we needed to look at was still sitting there, you know. The, uh, the debris, um, you know, the television set, everything was still in position. We didn't have to find parts and pieces scattered throughout the living room and try and put it all back together. So yeah, it, it maintains your scene uh, as an investigator. It, it uh, maintains the integrity a whole lot better. Any water that was used by fire crews was used in this immediate vicinity here. We had a, a large wooden older style television sitting in this vicinity here. Um, over here against the banister railing, we had a uh, plastic garbage bag full of assorted garbage and such. We had some broken bottles around, uh, some melted bottles of cleaning supplies that were sitting on the television. Like I say, Len tossed it up the stairs, landed right here. Perfect deployment in, as far as location goes. It was right near the seat of the fire. Um, fire was probably pretty close to flashing at that time. Temperatures would have been in that probably 1,000 to 1,100 degree range. You know, compared to what it could have been, definitely not much damage. This is definitely repairable. We, we were very close to losing this. A few more minutes, I would say, five to 10 minutes, this thing would have been uh, fully, fully involved. For more information or to order the Yara Safety Pro, call 1-888-955-8883 or visit www.arasafety.com.